So why do we get a uh, difference in behavior between uh, initially dense and initially loose materials? So why do we get a peak uh, shear st uh, strength within an initially dense material and not in an initially loose material? Well, the explanation uh, goes like this. So imagine we had an initially dense material. So. and we try to shear um, this material. You can see that if we shear, where we shear the, um, the material and along the shear plane, um, if we try to shear the, these top particles um, away from the bottom particles, you can see that the top particles in initially dense material will want to try and uh, ride up over the particles underneath or the particles below. So you get a... Um, the particles moving from an initially dense packing um, to what they are up here to something like um, the situation below. So the material would um, increase in volume. Um, and this is what we call dilation. So the soils dilate when they're initially dense. And because of that, it takes a little bit extra um, uh, shear force to, to get the, the, the particles over the, the underlying the particles on top of, over the underlying particles. Um, and that's why we get a, a, a peak shear strength. However, if the situation was initially reversed and we had an initially loose material, um, we would start off with a, si a situation with loose packing. And if we sheared the, the particles, um, the top particles uh, over the, the bottom particles, you'd see that we'd force um, a number of these particles, or a lot of these particles, into the spaces of, uh, we'd force the particles to fill the spaces between the, the, the particles below. So we'd go from an initially loose uh, material to a, um, a more compacted particle um, distribution. Um, and this is called compaction. And it's what would happen to initially loose materials. So there are two graphs that we can plot uh, during a shear box test to describe um, this behavior. Um, the first is if we take volumetric strain uh, that we calculated uh, throughout the test and plot that against shear strain that we calculate throughout the test. Um, the sample will look like this. So as we're increasing the shear strain, an initially dense material will do something that looks a bit like this. So this is dilation. So, so this is an initially dense material. So it's important to point out now why we get uh, we put volumetric strain on an inverted y-axis. Well, the reason for doing that is, like um, compressive uh, um, stresses within soils taken uh, to be positive, we also take compressive um, strains also to be positive. So a material that might be uh, compacting um, is taken as uh, a positive volumetric strain. So it's a little bit counterintuitive, but um, it's not too difficult to figure out. The reason why we flip the axis is we kind of like the idea of putting dilation on, uh, as a sort of um, an increasing um, positive uh, uh, feature on the diagram. So it's just a convention. We could flip it around and it should be exactly the same, but this is just the, the convention. Um, so this is dilation for initially dense material. For an initially loose material, it might look something like this, where we have compaction. So another uh, graph we can plot is shear, a specific volume against shear strain. Um, we can measure the um, specific volume uh, at the beginning of the, the test, or the, the specific volume of the material at the beginning of the test, and then calculate how it changes through time um, with, with, uh, with volumetric um, strain. Um, but if we plot the, these graphs, we can see that an initially dense material will increase um, its specific volume, so it will dilate, and it will dilate until it reaches a certain level. 
What's interesting is that for the same material that's initially loose, um, we get a compaction or a, a decrease in specific volume. But that should theoretically decrease to the same point. And that point um, is what we would call the critical state or the critical specific volume. Now we'll come back to critical states when we, we talk about that in later videos, but it's quite interesting to note now that the, whether it's initially dense or initially loose, um, it will change in, in specific volume will change until it reaches the, specific, uh, the critical specific volume, which is something quite, it's quite interesting to think that the, the pores within, this, within the, or the voids within the material um, will reach a, a, a situation, whether it's initially dense or initially loose, that's pretty much the same.